wait a minute. I forgot to bring this up. Do you guys know that one of my fantasies is coming true this week? No, it's not reading copy correctly. Uh, there's two bankers being put to death in Vietnam. Let me look this up here. Death, Vietnam. Vietnamese bankers sentenced to death for fraud. Here we go. This is what this is what should have been happening in this country in 2008. Like, it already should have, like, there should have been like, at least 100 bankers dead. You know what you should do is, like, smother them with cash. <laughs> no, what you do is you tie them to the mast of their yacht. Or their sailboat, right? And then you put a bunch of cash at their feet. All the cash that they stole, <laughs> you just light it on fire. Right? Like Jonah, fuck it up! Um, let me see if I can find where the fuck is it. Here we go. Yahoo Free News. Let's go here. A Vietnamese former banker and his business associates have been sentenced to death for their part in the embezzlement of $25 million. State media has reported 25 million bucks and you get the goddamn death sentence. All right. So I figured that the people at AIG, they ought to have like what happened to William Wallace at the end of Braveheart. Whatever that fucking thing is. Well, they just pull out your fucking entrails like machete. Um, the pair were among 11 defendants in the nine day trial in Ho Chi Minh City. State media reported on Saturday in a case that has heightened Vietnam's effort to show it is stamping out corruption in the face of widespread public anger over the issue. That's the only part of the story I don't like. Uh, the fact that they're trying to make an example. So now I think that they just got a couple of Ollie Norths here. They're going to kill two people or 11 and be like, see, we're doing something. And then it goes right back. Now, I don't know what politicians make in Vietnam, but if it's anything like over here, you know, the bankers put him in office, so I have no fucking idea. But anyways, this is the deal. Vu Quoc Hao, 58, the one-time chief of the finance subsidiary of the state-owned Vietnam Agribank and building firm boss Dang Van Hai, 56, were sentenced to death on Friday, according to state television. They were given the sentence for embezzlement of assets, mismanagement, abuse of power, and fraud, causing serious consequences to the state. Sound familiar, everybody? I just did that when I hated last week. Sound familiar? Um, the other nine defendants were jailed for up to 14 years for violating state economic regulations, the report added. The group was accused of embezzling more than $25 million of state money between April 2008 and March 2009 by falsifying financial leasing contracts, according to reports on state media. Vietnam is rated one of the world's most corrupt nations, and graft is a top concern for many ordinary people. The communist government has vowed to clamp down on the issue. There will be strict punishment for state... Ca uh, I'm not going to read the rest of this shit. I'll spare you guys. I read it pretty well up to that point. Um, so there you go. There you go. See that? It doesn't matter what kind of government you have. A democracy, communism, socialism, dictatorship, the fucking bankers are running shit. And they need to be put down in the fucking street and replaced with honest people. You know? Like some of those fine folks that I met out there in the heartland. That would be great. I would actually go to the execution. As fucking morbid as that is. You know? I would actually go there. Oh, come on. You f Don't have expectations. Don't have expectations of the Internet that it's actually going to work. Why would it work? Why would it work when you would need it to work? Just laugh. Make a note of it. Make a note of a difficult time in your life. Put it on the clothesline and send it on down and stay. Just remember, you're not reacting. You're observing. You're just... It's like you're sitting on a park bench watching traffic go by, except the trafficker are your thoughts. Oh, look, the requested URL cannot be retrieved. I'm going to have no reaction to this. I'm just going to sit here and let my podcast slowly sink into the abyss of something completely not even remotely funny. Of course. 
What do you mean, of course? Of course the moon landing happened. Bill, it happened. Jesus Christ. Can I ask you a question? First of all, Joe, you don't work at NASA, so you just shut up. Bill, neither do you. I know I don't. Are you actually opposing the concept that the moon landing possibly didn't happen? I'm, I'm, I know, I'm asking it. I'm just asking a question. You know it happened, Bill. Do you? Are you one of the people that think 9-11 could have been an inside job? Are yeah. You one of, oh, for Christ's sakes. All yeah. right. All right. I just want to know where I stand with you. That's all. Absolutely. Are you one of those guys who just watches TV and just feels like they're just telling you the truth? Oh, you're right, Bill. They got me brainwashed, man. I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't like how he can be this pompous ass. Like, are you one of those people? Blah, 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 blah. Like you're on fucking Fox News. I just. Joe, you don't read. I've st I spent a week with you. You don't do anything. Neither do you, Bill. I know. Well, stop fucking acting like you're above me. You're just I, as fucking stupid as I am. I think. I think. I'm just gonna fucking throw I this think at you. Certain. Certain theories are are more ludicrous than others. I think 9/11 being an inside job is ludicrous. I think it's ludicrous. Well, I don't know. When you see those firemen going that they heard like explosions and that type of thing, doing that that middle building, what the fuck was with that thing? What did it get lonely? The other two collapse and like there's no damage, and all of a sudden it's just gonna take a fall. That looked like Sonny Liston the first time he fell. A hundred and a ten story building fell on it. No, it didn't. Yeah, it did. It didn't. It did. Oh, yeah, that thing just perfectly fucking implodes. You know how many times? It's happened three times in no, history, all on 9-11. No, I'm was... not saying that fucking, right. like, literally the United States did it, but, I mean, I don't know. It just seemed... Dude, do you, believe, you, did... do, you, do you believe this shit, dude? That passport of Muhammad Atta was in, in his fucking pocket. It flew out, landed, like, 100 stories down underneath a fucking building, and it's perfectly readable, and they find a suitcase with all this damnable shit in it. Didn't the whole fucking plane disintegrate, dude? I'm just saying, dude. I'm not saying... I shouldn't have said that, that it's an inside job. But I'm saying, I don't know what happened. Whatever they said happened down there. It doesn't fucking add up, dude. There's a lot of, like... There's a well, lot of I weird don't... shit, man. There's definitely a lot of weird shit going on. My, you know, I, I think... I Pearl think... Harbor, the whole Japanese Navy is coming across the fucking Pacific Ocean and nobody notices. I think that... Part, you, I think this is what I think they do. I think they they so they don't literally plan shit. I think they look the other way, and shit ends up happening, and then everybody gets pissed, and then everybody's on the same page. Maybe that's how you have to do I it. I don't know if that's for the betterment of the country. I, you I, really, I, I have a friend. Let me say this. I have a friend that worked in a certain area of government security or whatever that field. He told me he was like well, he said after nine eleven. He goes. There's all this uproar about all the terrorist threats we're receiving. He goes, we've received, this country has received terrorist threats every single day in multitude for so many years, you can't even fathom. But now that something finally happened, it's being brought into the attention of the public. It's always hidden. It's never talked about. And once in a while, maybe something gets through and some shit happens. But he was like, this is par for the fucking course, man. These threats are coming in every single day in high volume. It's nothing new. It's nothing new. I don't at like all. how you pulled the "I have a friend in the Pentagon." It's card. true, though. I don't know. He's not in the Pentagon. He worked in gov in the in the field of government security and defense. So he asked people if they had their card when they walked into a government building. No, he. This worked, is your reference. No, he worked in. So, the, I, I don't, you know, defense, I don't know what the fuck no. I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, I don't. That's a great out. <laughs> no, I don't. I can't argue that. I don't. I'm a paranoid <laughs> psychopath. I, just, I don't buy any of it. I don't. It just all seems so fucking stupid to me. So, you you really think that like there was like a crew, like a demo crew, went into the World Trade Center and it was set up? No, no. Up you, know what I, you know what I really think? No, 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 no. I don't. Police. I don't. I don't think all of that. No you know, but but, but what, I, what I do think is the evidence that they got. I just I don't believe that you can be in a fucking plane that fucking bursts into flame, flames. They can't find the black box, but they find your passport. Okay. Well, all right. Uh, that type of if, shit. If I'm you want like, to argue that, that's fine. Yeah. But why is it so crazy? For a, a 747 to crash into a building and, oh, my God, the, the building actually comes down from it. No, it's more that it just, like, perfectly implodes. Yeah, but have you watched? So, yeah, so what are you saying? Because you're, you're not saying that there was a demo crew setting up charges in the building. So what are you saying? I'm saying I don't know what happened, but I, but whatever they're telling me, I just don't believe it. Why is it so hard to, to, to believe that jet fuel weakened all the steel in that because building? Because I watched scientists on TV saying the degrees that jet fuel burns at... And what the degree it it's has not, to be. It's not enough to melt to, steel. To it's, melt enough, steel. it's enough to weaken it 
Uh, you're, not a, you're not an architect either, dude. So stop, stop but with the I've, pointing. Well, I, yeah, but see, here's where you're uninformed, and I am informed because yeah, I've, first of I've all, watched Joe, enough you're stuff. giving me shit. This is the whole show. No <laughs> reading, no research, just strong opinions. See, okay? I, I, and you're, right. you're, you're giving me shit about it. I can't believe we're in this the fucking hacky 9-11 conspiracy theory. I didn't want to even be in I this fucking I just got annoyed shit. when you said, do you, you really, you're just going to believe at face value that somebody walked on the moon? Somebody walked on the moon. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. That's exactly what you were saying. No, no, I was saying with the 9-11 thing like i just some of the shit was just kind of like really that's fucking weird you said to Danny that's how it all started that it started with the thing about the moon you go do you believe somebody walked on the moon Danny goes yeah and you go you do why because bill somebody walked on the fucking moon we've been going to the moon for years how come whenever you look through a telescope you don't see the little car up there <laughs> didn't we leave shit up there the little car. Yeah, remember when they drove around the car? Was that just in Legoland, or did they really do that? <laughs> that was in Legoland and in Superman 2. Outside of that, there was no sure. car. No, no, that's what I've seen. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. binoculars? I'm sure if you okay. had a, power, a powerful enough telescope. Okay, you could... then we can catch Danny here. Hey, what are you looking at? A pair of binoculars? Exactly. What, what power level te telescope do I need to look through? What, Pro what? Probably 500X. <laughs> <laughs> I would have believed that if you said it with a straight face. Oh, God. I'm really getting pounded on this show by two other fucking idiots. That's what's annoying me. All right. The age of technology. Dear Billy Bombsite, I'm an open micer in a semi-small city and don't really expect to get much attention in this place. Well, that's a great place to start. Don't videotape yourself and get better. Well, videotape yourself, but don't upload it onto YouTube. And get, you get real good, then move to a better city with more exposure and then become a monster. Anyways, um, I recently found out that someone at an open mic was recording video of everyone set off. Oh, fuck. And put all of the captured content onto their social network page, including mine. When I found out that my shitty, undeveloped open micing was on the Internet, I was furious, as you should have been, and contacted the individual that posted it. They have since taken most of the content down, but I had a long argument about this situation with a different person. They argued in defense of this lady by saying, this is the world we live in now. You were in a public place, and that gave her the right to record you. The worst that happens is that you say something stupid and get, and you get publicity for it. Any publicity is good publicity. All right, you know what? That person's going to be a fucking hack. Um, he said, my argument is basically that if she earns any money from my content, then I have a right to be pissed off. I also feel very uneasy thinking about the possibility of saying something stupid about a current event and getting flack on Twitter just because I thought it was funny and no one else did. Yeah, and you're also brand new to comedy, and you should be allowed to make mistakes. Uh, with the recent popularity of the app Periscope and hearing you bitch a little bit about it, I would like to hear your opinion on this argument. Thanks, and go shag yourself. Uh, P.S. You still have fans in Nebraska. Um, yeah, no, I'm 100% agreement with you. You should be allowed to develop as an open micer, but you can't get mad at the lady. Like, they don't understand that what they're doing could be detrimental. Um, and it is the world that we live in because people do do that, but you're, you, you are right. Um, and I don't understand why everybody feels like they have to videotape every fucking moment of their lives now. It's all like, it's almost like they're campaigning for this office of, hey, I have the coolest life. Like, always taking a selfie. Like, you know, this is me at Old Faithful, you know? It's, so what, I'm supposed to look at it like, wow, this guy fucking goes everywhere. You know what I mean? I, I don't I don't understand it. I mean, I guess I do that, don't I do that? I took a picture of me and, uh, well, it wasn't a selfie, but me and Bartnick when we were in Reno with that iconic sign. I don't know, but I wish people wouldn't do it at live events, um, especially when there's jokes, because the new jokes become old jokes. But um, I think that's going to end because they're now coming out with these these businesses popping up for entertainers where they're going to block people's cell phones during the performance, which is uh, just pretty awesome, I think, if it's like up to the artist. Although I'm also guilty because I watch all this shit that people videotape to Stevie Ray Vaughan and that type of thing. Um, and then you get to enjoy the performance. But, you know, I don't think I'm going out on a limb to say that you're not at your Stevie Ray Vaughan level of being a stand-up yet. It'd be nice if you could be allowed to develop. Um, I, people have recorded my shows, and whenever I reach out to them on YouTube, they always take them down. I never get mad at them. I understand that they're not in the business and they don't get but that what they're doing actually hurts me on some level. Um, 
So just deal with it, whatever. Fuck that dude who's, hey, this is the world we live in. You know, those people who don't get mad that the government can record all your phone conversations. It's just like, well, hey, you know, if you're not doing anything wrong, what's the problem? Those fucking people. Apple fives the FBI. Dear Big Brother Billy, what are your thoughts on the battle between Apple and the FBI regarding hacking into the, the phones of the San Bernardino terrorists? Also, does the fact that the FBI has the phones for two months and can't get into them put a dent into any government overreach conspiracy theories? Uh, no, he says, the situation with Apple is FBI wants Apple to create an operating system that would allow for them to hack encryption on the phone. Uh, they would upload the system to the terrorist phone to allow them to unlock it. However, what? They would upload this system to the terrorist phone to allow them to unlock it. However, if Apple does this, the operating system can be used by the FBI and others to totally compromise any security on any iPhone in the future. Uh, the solution's simple. It's just like, just bring the phones to us and we'll hack into it. And whatever information you need on the phones, we'll do that for you. Yeah, once again, because of these terrorist cunts, what you're going to do is that you're going to allow all the, you know, these fucking lunatics at the top to take even more power and privacy away from you. And I could just, the simplest way to tell you this is just like, you know, the, the amount of people out there can, that can actually handle power. Uh, is it's very rare. I mean, look in my business, okay? You see what happens, you know? Everybody's down to earth, everybody's cool, and all of a sudden you get your own sitcom, and next thing you know, you're banning people from the set, you're tipping shit over, and nobody's saying shit because you're making all this fucking money. You don't handle it well, right? Being like, being like in the top levels of government and security, it's the same fucking thing. I don't think they handle it well. I think it's way too much freedom. And I'm sick of people saying shit like, well, hey, man, if you're not doing anything, then what are you worried about? I'm worried about the fact that, you know, just, you know, well, human beings do. We're awful. We're fucking terrible people. We're, we're terrible with the amount of access that we have now. You don't need to give people more access. And I don't feel like, you know, they keep just hiding behind this whole fucking thing of like, you know, well, we're just going to use it for the bad people. It's like, yeah, but you get to decide who the fuck's bad. That Snowden guy, he had to walk away. What they were building it was like the fucking Batman movie. They spy on their own fucking people. They're lunatics. I don't know what they do. I always picture them just sitting there fucking. I don't know, like, dude, do you know like that Snowden guy? He says when he stays in a fucking hotel room, he unplugs the phone because they have that speaker phone. Do you know that down at the front desk, they can turn it on? And just listen to whatever you're doing in there. You know, fucking your lady talking to yourself. Rubbing one out. Uh, whatever the fuck you're doing in the privacy of your own fucking hotel, they can just listen in on that shit. It's fucking, it's just the whole thing is creepy. And, um, yeah, no, it's, it, I can't imagine, you know, what by the time, you know, if I live, you know, to be like 90, 100 years old, like I would like to, um, I want to see the fucking, I want to live in every fucking decade. You know, I want to get to the 60s again. I was born in 1968. I want to make it, you know. I just keep thinking shit like that. I want to make it, right? So um, I can't imagine, like, the lack of privacy that there'll be if, if you live that long. Just with, like, people with, like, drones and shit like that, like the cameras and just how, like, I think in the future, right, they're going to they're gonna have, like, these, uh, like, microchips, like, misters, you know, and like somebody walks by and somebody just hits you with a little mist and all these little microchips go on you. And when you shower, like most of them come off, but like a few will still stick on you. And then your next door neighbor can just watch your whole fucking life. There'll be no more TV shows. We'll just be spying on each other. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's all fucking creepy. And I think that's way too much. I don't think the FBI needs to fucking do that. I think Apple should work with the FBI and uh, if there's ever, like, somebody that they want to fucking check in on, you know, let them do it. Say I'm call them up. Yes, it is. It is just as fucking bad. So anyways, to stay on, oh, now I'm already off fucking track. You know what my fucking bank did to me? I walked in. I had this account in New York that I kind of, uh, a little 
checking account that had a little bit of money in. And all of a sudden, I noticed they were taking some fees out. I'm like, well, that shouldn't be. So I get to New York. I walk in. I talk to the douchebag who works there, and he goes, yeah, they're taking $27 a month out. I don't know why that is. Here, let me check to see what's up. Click, 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 click on his thing. And he goes, yeah, we shouldn't have been doing that. And I go, okay, well, can you refund the money? And they go, absolutely. Uh, and I go, well, well, you know, I've had the account for like six years. Can we see how long you've been doing this? And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. Our, our records only go back for four months. <coughs> really? It only goes back for four months? That's amazing. Because my bank records at home go back the entire time I've had the account. That's incredible. And I just have some piddly sum in there while you deal with hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions, if not trillions. I don't know what the fuck you have. I just know there's a fucking bank of yours in every goddamn state now. But, of course, it only goes back like four months. So I go, all right, well, what if I bring my records in? I look them over, and I find out how long you've been doing it. And they're like, no, nah, we can only refund it for four months. I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? And he goes, well, the bank kind of looks at it like that, that, that was on you. What do you. And I was like, it's on me? To not, to, to not be, like, paying attention to make sure the people who are supposed to be keeping my money safe aren't fucking stealing from me? And he sort of, like, laughed. I'm like, dude, this isn't funny. This is ridiculous. You guys just stole from me. And if you've been doing it for six years, what's that, 270 bucks? Yeah, another fucking uh, 50, like, almost 300 bucks a year for six years. That's like 1,500 to 1,800 bucks, somewhere in there. And the guy's just sitting there fucking laughing. And, uh, you know, that's the usual shit. Yeah, what are you going to sue us? Go ahead. We'll take some of that bailout money, which is part of your tax money, and we'll fucking... Uh... So I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to close out the account. And uh, and I don't know. What do I do? Then I go across the street to one of the ba four banks that are left. If anybody out there is in banking, how do I get my money back beyond the four months? Because I know that they've been doing it longer than this. Um, can anybody explain that, you know? This is why, people, this is why you don't put 100% of your paycheck into the fucking bank. You got to look at it this way. If somebody mugged you last week, would you walk up to the same person and take your paycheck and stick it in their back pocket? You wouldn't, would you? But for some reason, we have these fucking bankers. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think everybody should turn, like, I don't know. Everybody should have a fucking safe that you have buried somewhere. Everybody's got a gun, and anybody can blow anybody away. I know, it's all fucked up. Fucking assholes. The guy's sitting there fucking smiling. You know what he's sitting there doing? He's doing that little twirly thing. You know that math people do with their pens, and people who are into uh, finances? I think they do it to hypnotize you. Says the guy's fucking sitting there telling me that they've been stealing 30 bucks a month from me, and all I'm doing is I'm trying to focus on him. I keep looking down at his silver, shiny pen. Some sort of mind trick. Fortunately, I was aware of it. I almost said, can you stop twirling your fucking pen? But I didn't want to do that because I was trying to keep my cool, which obviously is a difficult thing for me to do. You know? I know right now, oh, Bill, it's just 27 bucks a month. Times how many fucking people? You remember Superman 3 when Richard Pryor stole half a cent from everybody and the next day he had a fucking Ferrari? These fucks are taking 27 bucks a month from everybody. I'm convinced of it. Ah, it's the fucking mob. I swear to God, the mob went legit. Or those there will be blood guys. They're the fucking assholes that run the goddamn banks. These fucking cunts are just stealing from me, and there's nobody. Nobody's gonna help me. What am I gonna go down there? Huh, I'm gonna get that guy. I used to be on the fucking uh, Leave It to Beaver. What the fuck was the name of that show? Uh, Maybury. I always hated that show. That old cunt walking around with their falsetto voice. Andy. You know. You know what that show lacked? Somebody that I wanted to bang. <laughs> That's why I didn't watch it. There was nobody fuckable on it. That was the brilliance of the Munsters. That they were like, this is going to be hilarious. We're going to turn fucking Frankenstein into Drac and Dracula into these kooky characters. And it's all going to be funny. But they knew at the end of the day there had to be somebody that the male demographic would want to fuck. So they came up with that girl who was allegedly ugly. Why am I explaining this classic show? You know the deal. And she looked like Marilyn Monroe. And that's what kept you in there. I don't know. Right? Batman, after a while, it's like, dude, what is going on with this 40-year-old guy and his ward? 
And then all of a sudden they had Catwoman walking around that fucking hoary outfit. Is she the one who started that shit? Did women not dress like whores on, uh, on Halloween before Batman? Or, or Batgirl? Or Catwoman? Catwoman was a bad one, right? They're such pathetic cunts. You know what I mean? It's, will you take off that fucking ridiculous outfit? Go stand behind a wall and, and, and start talking to people. And listen to how many people even fucking pay attention to you. They don't because you got nothing to say. All you can do is just dress up your goddamn twat and start strutting around the fucking place. That had nothing to do with Catwoman. That had nothing to do with her. It had to do with me fucking getting fucked over by that goddamn bag. Assholes. Fucking assholes. So now I got to go down there. I got to go down there like, like some fucking guy whose button store just failed after 75 years. You know, Frankie Fishface and Sons. Remember those fucking um, those businesses when you were a kid? It was always something, something and Sons. You know, and like a lot of the times the kids were forced into the business. You know, some Italian guy, he opens a fucking prosciutto shop. And then that's it. It's like an arranged marriage, except it's your job. And then you got to show up. And be, I, wo- I have been working in the restaurant since I was eight years old. Da, 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 da. Now, you know, they don't know shit about anything else. So everybody wanted to strike out on their own. And now look, everybody ends up in a fucking cubicle working for these fucking cunts who are stealing my money. That's uplifting, isn't it? B of A, outage. Uh, hey, Banker Bill, I work for B of A. And from the customer service side, that outrage was very stressful. If you haven't already mentioned it slash found out, the outrage was a result of a... Oh, Jesus Christ. This guy works for the fucking bank. He's going to he's gonna tell me what happened. And he can't even spell the words. I don't... I don't... You wrote half a word here, buddy. S-E-V-E-R. A sever reboot? Is that supposed to be a severe reboot? Is sever a word? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I was told from my boss, my boss's boss, in passing, when he was leaving work, one of the tech guys managing the server ran a program to check for viruses and shit. Okay, this guy manages your money. Check for viruses and shit. (laughs) Oh, God, he talks like me. And the program made... Jesus Christ. The program made that one particular server to shut down, causing the rest of our online products to not work. That's a sentence by a guy who works at a bank. The program made that one particular server to shut down. To shut down? The program made that one particular server shut down? Is that what you mean? Causing the rest of our online products to not work. The bank had to restart all the servers to sync that tech crap up resulting in the six-hour delay. From the call center side, we could still see all the balances and account information. Clients themselves just couldn't process any maintenance. Nothing made my day more enjoyable than apologizing to client after client for our system error. Had a few people in the situation you mentioned on Thursday. What? where they stuck outside the country with no money. Oh, had a few people in the situation you mentioned on Thursday where they are stuck outside the country. This guy is a fucking, this guy should have been in summer school next to me. Totally agree you need to have backup plans when it comes to accessing your money, whether it be multiple bank accounts or stuffing some cash underneath the pillow where you rest your bald freckled dome at night Keep doing what you're doing uh, and go fuck yourself. Yeah, I've never met a banker that believes in the banking system, if you really talk to them about it. They're nervous, too. I I don't know. Anyways, uh, was that supposed to make me feel better? I mean, I guess it's good that no one hacked into your system. You guys just kind of were running something and something got fucked up. Um. But he agreed with me. Yeah, have a little money here, a little money there, a little money there. Don't have all your eggs in one basket. We all know that, right? Because then everything's going to be on the arm with the fucking one flew of the cuckoo's nest. What are you going to do? Did you hear Bank of America? Evidently their entire fucking system was down. How does that happen? That's not scary enough, is it? 
Jesus Christ. I hope they didn't. You know, I should look that up. I should look that up before I, I cause a run on a bank. Is that the name of a song? Run on a bank. Is that a Bob Seger song? What's that? Ain't no surprise. Oh, that's Love on the Rocks, not Run on a Bank. Love on the Rocks. Ain't no big surprise. I thought it was Run on a Bank. Grabbing by their ties. Especially with their milk white fucking thighs. Why does my internet suck in every fucking room? I swear to God, whoever my internet company is they, they have to have a poster me on the wall going we need more customers like this he pays 10 times what he should fucking pay it never works and he never complains unless he's doing his podcast but who gives a fuck because he never calls us so what do we care we just keep taking his fucking money all right here we go bank of america fuck yeah everyone in the world is jealous of us Everyone wants to be just like us. That's why they hate on us. All right, maybe, maybe we've gotten out of line in a few areas. All right, evidently it's loading. You know what I mean? Watching my computer try to get on the Internet, like waiting for it for load, it's like watching me try to remember shit from fucking two days ago. Oh, you sneaky fucking bastards. This isn't what I wanted. I didn't want your website. I wanted the fucking gossip. What do I got to hit? Bank of America slash TMZ? Bank of fucking America. Here we go again. Bank of America. Google. Here we go. Here we go. What do you got? What do we got? Customers shut out of accounts during apparent Bank of America outage. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I'm just picturing someone with one of those. What's that white mask that those fucking hackers wear? When they want to shut down the corporations. Um, all right, here we go. Bank of America customers were shut out from their accounts. Oh, an advertisement. Oh, Ralph's. Jesus, you know what? I will buy a honey of a ham. All right, we're back. Bank of America customers were shut out from their accounts for several hours Wednesday in a system outage. You know somebody's fucking, you know, didn't get dialysis or their heart stops. You would, you would, you were such, was. We're so at the feet of these fucking cunts. Coral Springs resident Eric Sleeper. Oh, he's a sleeper. You never think he could run that fast in those work boots. And there he goes down the street. Said we got what looked like a phishing email from the bank Wednesday and immediately started calling customer service to see if something was wrong. A message on his online account said it could not pull up his information. When we called his local branch, a manager said that the local managers were calling each other trying to figure out what caused would appear to be a national outage and why they were unable to provide certain services. Like what? Provide you with the money that you need? Um, on downdetector.com, a website that tracks reports of system outages, reports started spiking after 11.30 a.m. and the website was inundated with comments from Bank of American customers. Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> Send around the country saying they couldn't access online banking computers transited by 1 p.m. they had received nearly 1,000 reports of problems but by Wednesday evening all although some customers were still reporting problems the number of reports had gone down considerably to about 200 and then this is their comment I know that the team is working quickly to bring everything back up uh, as time progresses they should be able to go back online I would really love to see what really happened Uh, Bank of America system wide system wide outage on the day I'm closing on my, closing on my house and there's nothing I can do about it. Bank of America, you closed my bank account with no notice. How can I deposit my check when I no longer have an account? Stuck in Thailand. What is up with not being able to transfer? System has been down for three hours. Oh Jesus, Jenny, that's nothing compared to the guy stuck in Thailand. The clerk at Bank of America just said, I can't make a de deposit because of nationwide disruption. Anyone know what's up? All right, yeah, okay. All right, well, let's just hope that was a one-time thing. Nothing to see here. That's fucking scary. That's why you got to have your, your money in like three different banks. I don't care if you got 40 bucks. Put 15 in one, 10 in another. What do we got left there? What's that, 25? You got 15 in the last one, right? 15, 15, and 10. It's a fucking shell game out there, man. 
Um, and when you got to pay your rent, you write three different checks. <laughs> Why don't you just write it for the full amount? Because I'm not going to get stuck in Thailand, you cunt. What do you care as long as it all works? All right, banker cunts. All right, Billy Boy. Uh, so have you heard about these greedy cunts at Goldman Sachs? That was kind of a national story. What, did they do something else? You said they cornered a large share of the market in aluminum and then betted on the futures of aluminum with the price going up. Sounds illegal? It is, but of course those stupid fucking cunts found a loophole in the law. The loophole is that 25 tons of aluminum is supposed to leave the warehouse every day. However, the law doesn't specify where it had to go. So they would just send it to another warehouse of theirs and technically it didn't leave the warehouse. In the New York Times article, they interviewed people who previously worked at these warehouses. They would jokingly send each other messages and say, hey, get, hey, get that, that shipment of aluminum. But really, they were just transferring it to an adjacent warehouse. Uh, I, I, this is, I don't even get what the fuck's going on here. Of course, Goldman Sachs has recently posted its largest quarter profit of over $2 billion. When can we take these bankers out into the street and just shoot them? All joking aside, this shit is insider trading and they should be prosecuted, but we know that won't happen. Uh, P.S. Know you're busy for a while, but when are you coming back to Atlanta? Uh, I actually don't know. I don't know when I'm coming back to Atlanta. You know what, that's one of those things I should have read that 20 times in a row and learned what exactly is going on. I think this is basically how they get away with it, is that there's too many people like myself that don't even understand what was going on there. All that stuff, betting on futures, I don't even understand what any of that means. I was just in the stock market long enough to realize, like, hey, I don't, I don't know what the fuck's going on. I'm, I'm, I, I basically felt like I was standing at a crap table. Uh, I put my money on a crap table, in a, and I wasn't even in the casino. You know, I was in a different state, and then I was calling somebody else up going, hey, how's the game going? You know, I saw a couple of stats at the bottom of the screen and I can't even read them. I don't even know if the game's even being played. That's what I can't get past about everybody listening to this podcast. You don't you don't have any of the money that you earn every week. You don't have any of it. You ever think about that? It's a number on a piece of paper. You take it to the bank. And then they stick that number in your ATM. And then occasionally you go to the ATM and they give you a piece of paper that is only worth something because everybody says it's worth something. But you really have nothing of value. What you have is the piece of paper that's uh, part of the lie. So that, that is the genius of all of this shit. And through penalties and fees and taxes and all that crap, they get you even further removed where you have to invest it. You know, why do I have to fucking invest it? You can't, I don't know. You don't get anything. You don't get anything of fucking value. The only thing that has value is the lie. And as long as the lie continues, I mean, isn't this the month where we go to raise the debt ceiling every fucking year? Eventually that wave's going to crash. Um, I don't know. I hope when the wave crashes that all races and all economic levels somehow put down their differences and they all come together and we just start walking towards gated communities. All right, there you go. How much are you stealing that you have to live behind a gated community? They're, li they're sitting there acting like they're, they're afraid that we're gonna steal their shit. It's like you got your shit by stealing from us. All right, anarchy, sorry. Hey, how come you can't protest without getting tear gas shot at you? All around the world. You know, they act like, you You know, we want to hear from our people. And you go out there and you're just sitting out there. All you're doing is you got signs and you're chanting. And then the cops come down there and they start pushing people around and they throw fucking tear gas. I don't understand. Why, why can't you do that? Why aren't you allowed to protest? Look, I understand if you go down there and you start breaking windows and that type of shit. Uh, but I, I actually believe, and I know you guys are going to think that I'm paranoid. If I was in power, I would just say, hey, hey, how old is your son? Yeah, send him out there and have him throw a rock through a window so we can look justified when we get rid of these fucking people out here. 
Um, God, I'm sorry. I'm going back down the fucking rat hole again. Somebody sent me a great rant that this guy went on on a news program, and he was talking about the bankers. Because uh, I can't even watch news right now with our government might shut down in a couple of days. But this guy was basically going off, saying all that banker shit that I was trying to say a few years ago when I started watching those videos and everybody was saying, oh, yeah, these are fucking fat guys living in their mother's basements who uh, they don't have any lives and you're just, you know, you're drinking the Kool-Aid and all this shit. Now, look, a lot of that stuff, we never landed on the moon. I'll give you all that shit. Okay. Maybe all of that stuff, 9-11's an inside job. I'm not talking about any of that fucking crap. But that banker shit, I'm telling you, that banker shit is dead on. Dead fucking on. It's not the left. It's not the right. It's those cunts right in the middle with money on both sides of the ball. It's those guys. And um, I have to tell you, dude, the, the fact that the president only makes 400 grand a year and that just the way they frame it, like, oh, he's a public servant, and blah, 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 blah. It's, it's the biggest crock of shit out there. The only person who would take that job, you'd have to be the biggest fucking yes man on the planet just to get there. You, 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 who the fuck would run for a job where it costs a hundred million to get it so you can make four hundred grand a year? That, that isn't a red flag to anybody. Then you get to go around giving speeches a million dollars a whack like that isn't your kickback for fucking pushing through whatever they wanted. I just think it's it's so beyond corrupt. Um, and I used to think shit like, I can't believe we're letting these pencil-pushing, banking pussies push us around. But it's not them. It's the fact that people will do anything for money. So when you have that kind of money, you can hire psychos. And, uh, you know, I don't know. You get that you get that Lincoln Town car ride, the convertible in Dallas. All right. I spoke about it vaguely, but you know what I'm saying. All right, let's let's uh let's move Oh, here's a, I got a funny fucking story for you. All right? Listen to this shit. So I'm going through fucking security. All right? And they have the reg, regular metal detector, and then they got the fucking x-ray one that I don't go through. I don't go through that fucking thing because I don't give a shit what they tell me. That thing is not good for you. I remember when it first fucking came out and people were opting out, and I remember people going like, oh, what's the big deal? You already talk on your cell phone, like all that dumb shit that people say, you know? Um, yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, so why don't I get extra radiation, you know? Why don't I just add to it, just make sure I get fucking cancer, right? And what did they say? They tried to say that the thing was totally fucking safe, and then what ends up happening? After a year and a half of radiating everybody in my country too much, they realized that they had the fucking thing turned up too high. And to this fucking day, when you go through one of those, if, they, if a kid's young enough, they, they fucking send them around. Because it fucking retards the puberty process or something like that. But I'm supposed to go through it? Go fuck yourself. So I always opt out. And I don't give a fuck about your opinion on this, by the way. I don't need to hear your fucking opinion. This is just my opinion. If you want to go through the fucking thing, more power to you. So I'm down here in Australia, and they got the regular one, and then they got the fucking, the bad one. So every third person or whatever has to go through or whatever. So I come up and guess what? They want me to go through the other one. And, it, and I'm like, yeah, I'm opting out. And they're like, you can't opt out in Australia. So now I'm in this fucking thing where I'm challenging authority in a different country, which is always scary. But I just said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going through it. And the guy starts going like, oh, well, uh, he goes, do you mind if I ask you why? And I go, yeah, because I used to work in a dental office. And I took fucking x-rays and I put a lead vest over somebody before I fucking took an x-ray. And I got cancer in my family, so I don't want to go through it. And he goes, well, you can't opt out of here. Plus, the ones down here, he goes, this thing is, he goes, this thing only sees through your pockets. This fucking rent-a-cop, like he knows how this fucking thing works, right? Oh, it just sees through your pockets. Really? You fat fuck? What do you know about anything other than eating too many fucking donuts, you douche, right? So I say to the guy, I go, well, we had the one in the States. They had it turned up too high. He goes, this is a different one. I go, no, it isn't. I go, that's the same company. I'm not going through it. 
He goes, all right, well, then you have to stand over there. I'm like, fine. So the guy fucking makes me stand over there for like 10 minutes. Then this other fucking guy comes walking over, and he's got this little fucking... Do you know like when the you know like when you get your baseball team schedule or your hockey team schedule for the fucking year? He comes over with one with one of those that's like four pages. Most of it is pictures. And he goes, if you just want to read up on it, and I've just started laughing, like what, that little kid's book you have there? That explains that complex fucking machine over there? And he goes, No, but it explains it. I go, Who who explained it? The people who made that fucking thing? I'm obviously not cursing at him. But they just said you can't fucking opt out. It's a law down here. Now, if I had the fucking time and the wherewithal, the presence of mind during that conversation, I, I should have said, tell me what law it is. Tell me what fucking law that says I have to go through that fucking thing. Pat me down. We don't do that here. Well, you should fucking start. Fucking unreal. So then I ended up having to go through the goddamn thing. The guy was actually nice. He apologized for it. And I just said, listen, man, I know it's not you. It's, this is what it always is. It's not you. You're just the guy here who has to tell me I have to fucking go through it. But the real cunts who are making money off it, who fly fucking private, who never have to go through that thing, don't have to worry about having their entire fucking head all the way down to their balls and their fucking toes radiated. So if there's anybody out there that has a fucking scientific background and can explain to me how something that can see through my fucking clothes is not, a, is not, a, uh, is not some sort of an x-ray. I mean, Jesus Christ, drinking Coca-Cola can give you cancer. You're telling me st standing in that fucking thing? Head to fucking toe, put your arms up. Oh, it just shoots beams at you. It's just looking at what's in your pockets. Oh, yeah? Is that why when I come out the other side, there's an entire image of me? I don't know. So whatever. So that was my fucking big goddamn moment. Fucking fat fuck. Make, making me stand there for life. That's another thing that they do, that passive-aggressive thing, is they make you stand there for fucking ten minutes trying to break your will, knowing that you're probably late for your flight. When all that shit came out about Trump, right? He did this, he did that, blah, blah, blah. It was all pretty pedestrian, sort of like, oh, he grabbed my boob and then took me in the back. Just, just really generic, sort of, like, it's become sort of the cliched story. And then this one woman, so I'm sitting there going like, all right, the Clintons are fucking filthy. Who knows if they paid these people? Who knows what the fuck's going on? It's right before the, just when this is coming out. And so I was going, all right, we'll see, we'll see. And then this finally this woman came on and she goes, uh, so he made advancements at me. And she goes, I, I just pushed him away and said, get real, which is the perfect thing to say because you're, you're in your 20s. He's like fucking 106. It's like, yeah, right. are you serious? So she goes, I said, get real. And then she said, he thrusted his genitals towards me and, he's, and said, get real yeah and she said that and the way she imitated him i was in the car with my wife we st i said he fucking did that one he did that one there's no fucking way that is just too specific like i got the creeps of like get real so i wonder what uh, the logistics are or where the legality is rather of the the audio tape like, if you don't know you're being recorded, like, you know you're being recorded for a show, you're wearing a microphone, but you don't know you're being recorded while you're on a bus, and you're talking about I, grabbing them by the pussy and all that. He was talking, to me, talking trash. he's talking shit. Yeah, like, it, it, like yeah. Joey Diaz would say something like that, and I'd be fucking crying, laughing, and he would be egging it up. He would ramp it up, he would make it way exaggerated, because yeah. he knows it's funny. He's going for the laugh. Yeah. Yeah. If you're sitting next to Trump, and he's like, I just grab him by the pussy, you'd be fucking crying, laughing. That's why it was what, just you, too. I defended him on my podcast. Like, it, like I'm not saying the guy's a great guy, but to fire a fucking guy because of a, 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 a fucking 20-second clip from 11 years ago. What's he supposed to do? He's interviewing the guy, and what you're supposed to do is keep the interviewer happy. Yes. The interviewee happy. So if he's like, grab him by the pussy. Hey, grab him by the pussy. Yeah. But he's he just, not even saying anything bad. Billy Bush didn't say anything bad. He just this didn't guy admonish at work, him. This guy at work said, well, when he said to the woman go over and give him a hug he became part of the sexual uh, assault and i was just like what sec there was no sexual assault what they were saying if he actually did it was but the whole thing was just like like this just you know i understand women getting flipping out about it as far as obviously just the whole it would be them but yes. what they don't know is the way guys talk <laughs> when they're not there. Yes. And I'm just, I'm going to say, dude, the fucking shit that we've said. And we, and we say it for fun. Yeah. We don't say it because we really want to go grab someone by the pussy and pick them up like a bowling ball. Yeah, we say it because it's funny. It's funny and you're just, you're talking. And it's completely ridiculous yeah. and inappropriate. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, like, but Joe, if, like Joey but, Diaz is a perfect say, example. I will say, if you do have a billion dollars, I, I'm, what I'm learning through Cosby and all these fucking guys is evidently you can do that. <laughs> and he did say that. He's going, like, you get famous enough, you can just walk up and grab him by the pussy. And I'm just, that was just so absurd to me. I'm like, you can do that? You can't do that. But he's got so much money. you got to think when he gets that billion. I don't think that, that guy could get you six grand in cash if you he gave him five this, weeks. But I don't I think just that's don't. correct. I think he's leveraged out quite totally. a bit. But I'm pretty sure he'd go to the ATM and get six grand. But I know you're exaggerating, too. Six right. grand's a funny number. It's a funny number. It is funny. Right. I'm just saying, like, right. dude, th th there's, like, liquid rich Right, and your assets are paid off, and then there's, oh, I got this, and I'm gonna take a loan against this, and then I'm gonna do that and get some investors here, and then I'm gonna stick my fucking name on it to build my brand. There's that way where you're sort of like steroiding up your yes. your value, but at the end of the day, it's like, all right, but what? How much can you get me right fucking now? Like, I don't get that whole, like, well, all my shit's tied up, right? And I got other guys, you know, I'm I'm working with. Let like, me see the zeros. What's in your bank account? Show me yes. your phone. Yeah. Yes, Show that me. helicopter, that helicopter with your name on the back, is that paid off? <laughs> is that a sticker? But is you, that a sticker that they take off and then they put fucking Mark Cuban on the back? But that if you're name? a woman showing up at his house and you're, having, you're supposed to have a business lunch, you don't know that. You, you show up, he's got this sprawling estate that looks like a castle. He's got these enormous grounds. He's probably got 50 people working just at his house. There's people right. greeting you. They take you into these rooms. He comes out in a $10,000 suit. He's got diamonds and Rolexes and everything's beautiful. And you're like, holy shit, yeah. it's Donald Trump. His toupee is like 80 grand. <laughs> what is he doing with his fucking hair? Why doesn't he go the way you and I did? You and I recognize it was over because I, I don't think it was acceptable back then but it's acceptable. jordan now. had to make it acceptable jordan made it acceptable but he made it acceptable for black guys for uh, white but guys he transcended no, curly neal of the globetrotters <laughs> made right. it acceptable for black guys <laughs> and right. then jordan was just you know everyone wanted to be like mike hey what's going on it's bill Byrne. it's time for the monday morning podcast for monday march 28th 2016 the year of the yak Whatever the fuck it is in the Chinese New Year, I have no idea. Isn't that New Year next, next, uh, next month? How does that work with those people? You know, how do like I don't I don't get it. I, I just don't I don't understand why we're on standard and everybody else is on metric. Can we just pick one fucking calendar, one unit of measurement? You fucking go over to Europe, Jesus Christ, metric, and then some old guys talk. Hey, wait, fucking twenty stone, twenty stone. I mean, I guess we're still saying horsepower. Jesus fucking, well, what size stone? What are you, a fucking Freemason? Um, is your buddy in the Illuminati? Is that where he's at? Uh, your little secret group? You think you're going to make it? Buying up land on the aquifers? Is that what you're going to do? And then what? Huh? All the robots are going to take everything over, right? You phase everybody out, but uh, except you. And then you you guys. You guys are going to be good. And then all the robots, for some reason, aren't going to turn. How many fucking movies do you need to watch? Before you realize that they're eventually going to turn on you. Stuck on you. You made a fucking robot. Now it's choking you off with your dick. And you deserve it. Mighty glad you stayed. There you go. That was a little Illuminati with uh, Lionel Richie. Anything like that. Um, somebody sent me this fucking video. They go, hey, you might want to watch this thing. And it was basically this person was talking about, uh, was showing how the automobile put the horse out of business, you know, which it was so funny to me. Like the horse was upset, like, oh, fuck. You mean human beings are not, aren't going to ride on my back anymore? God, uh, what, what, now what do I got to do? I can't run free on the plane? Um, I guess the horse population dropped off, but like nobody who was, no, you know, most of them are born into, uh, I guess you really don't see horses running around, do you? Maybe out in Wyoming. Yeah. See a lot of cows at the Waffle House. I'm sorry. Well, why would you do a fat joke, Bill, this early in? Come on. You're better than that, Bill. Hang on a second. But come on, Bill. Okay, but we're going to do this a while. Can we kind of probably fucking have, like, just a certain standard of comedy? You got to go that low. You know, you got to attack the broads and fat people all at the same time that early. Hey, you know, whatever. You got to shoot your way out of a slump. It's my second attempt to get this thing going. This is one of these times I'm recording the podcast, not because I'm feeling it. It's because I have to because I got shit to do tomorrow. So uh, I got to kind of knock this thing out on Easter. So anyways, anybody, somebody shows me this fucking thing. So the guy shows how the, the car put the horse out of fucking business. 
And, uh, yeah, like I said, like, like the horse is upset. It's like when you watch those weird commercials where, like, uh, the Mr. Potato Heads are sneaking off to eat potato chips. There's some sort of weird, like, undertones of cannibalism going on there, and it's supposed to be adorable. I don't, I don't get those commercials on any level. Um, but uh, totally lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, so they were basically showing how computers and everything being automated is going to phase everybody out, and there's going to be this mass unemployment that is coming. Um, like this is fucking groundbreaking thought. I mean, a dummy like me has been saying this for fucking ever, right? And he just kept going like, oh, so you're in this industry? Well, you're not safe either. You think, you know, you actually, you're a computer programmer. Well, guess what? You're not safe either, buddy. Just fucking relax. And like, he just kept coming with that tone. And at some point I was just like, well, you're going to fucking shine that light in yourself there? Maybe he does by the end. I couldn't listen to him. What about condescending douchebags who think they know everything narrating over these fucking videos? You know, with your big dude, I called it. Really? Or is technology in the future going to get rid of jobs? Yeah, I had no idea. It's only been doing that since the beginning of fucking time. These fucking people are just forever forecasting that the sky is going to fall. This is the fucking thing. Eventually, the sky will fall. Nobody knows when it's going to happen. Everybody's been trying to predict it ever since that fucking Nostradamus douchebag, all the way down to a moron like me. And the bottom line is none of us know what we're talking about. Oh, the lovely Nia. I'm busting in on your podcast. Well, get a microphone and a, and a plug. They're in, the, uh, they're in the closet. So the bottom line is nobody knows when all this shit's going to end. So just, just fucking go enjoy yourself. You know, I just feel like this fucking all this whole presidential election. You got you got one loon. It's in the clo it's on the closet on the top shelf. You got one lunatic on the fucking left, another lunatic on the right, and then you got this fucking I don't know what she is in the middle. You know, she's not really in the middle. She's just more the same. You know, they're gonna they should just wheel her into the White House like fucking Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> one of those fucking masks on. You just wanna have to watch her awful fucking mouth. You need the plug too. Oh, I got the plug over here. Let me hit pause so the listeners don't have to fucking listen to this shit. No, I was talking about the Illumin. This fucking video somebody told me to watch where it was just like, this guy's just saying how technology and robots are going to phase everybody out. And he just goes, you, you know, oh, you're a milkman? You think you're safe? Check out this fucking robot and everything. It's just like, yeah, well, what about condescending douchebags who narrate videos? Like, they probably already have a robot to do that, right? <laughs> don't they? To do what? I'll tell you this. To just narrate shit. They already have the fucking robot lady in the elevator. <laughs> or even that's just a voiceover. That can somebody, fucking Can somebody woman... please make a poster? It's like a horror film. And what did you say? That weird robot lady in the elevator? I want that somebody... fucking robot lady in the elevator. <laughs> I want somebody to do <laughs> a poster for a movie with your face looking very concerned. There's like an elevator No, she's it. depressing. She's in like every fucking <laughs> elevator. And it's like going up. And then when she says going down, she goes, going down. And she really, like, like <laughs> your whole life is going in the shitter. And I can't tell you how many people I've been in the elevator. I go, I, I, it's so fucking depressing. They're like, I know. I hate it. It's yeah, not just know. me. Okay. You know, it's all of us out there in the Ramadas. <laughs> you know? All right. Virtual reality headset blowjob. Uh, all what? right. I know you hate technology, but would like to hear your opinion on this. My girlfriend half-jokingly promised me a double blowjob for my 30th birthday. Um, I do not expect this to happen, but I have been joking with her that the date is approaching and she should have a girl lined up, etc. I have also been talking about virtual reality slash VR headset as I'm thinking of getting one. I don't know what that is. Yeah, what is that? She asked me the other day, would I be able to watch porn through it? I said, yes. She then said, instead of the double buy, why don't you wear the headset and I can give you normal oh. buy while watching a porno. Wait, what are you, what were you saying? Buy? Buy? Oh, BJ. Yeah. I'm like, That's not oh, you know what? It was underlined in red. <laughs> So I couldn't see the bottom part. I was like, what is this buy? <laughs> oh, my reading, God. Your reading skills are atrocious. 
Yeah, and bi would actually mean that there would be a guy and a girl doing it. I wasn't even, I was thinking about like his girlfriend would be like bi because she was down there with another chick. <laughs> I am stupid. See this, people? You two could be successful in life. You're as dumb as me. She then, she then, instead, instead of a double BJ, let me read this again. Wow. Why don't you wear a headset and I can give you a normal BJ while watching a porno? Why can't you do that now that's with a TV? That's crazy. Because I feel like when they, that's some like weird Tron futuristic shit where you put it on. Is this like opening Pandora's it? box or is this yes. the, a way for VR to be seen as a techie sex toy? You are really asking the wrong person that question. You know Bill doesn't know what Looking the fuck Looking forward to is. see you in Dublin. <laughs> Myself and some friends will be coming from Belf. Oh, this is the, that was the one. Okay. Um, is this the same? No, I read the ending to the other one, to that one. <laughs> and it was weird because the ending was in front of the other one. <laughs> oh, fuck you and fuck oh everybody else. God. Yeah, yeah. Big, it's all funny. It's all fun and games until I stop podcasting, huh? Oh. I've had enough of this. Sensitive BB. Um, no, I'm not. I don't care. Um, it is a slippery slope, but I feel like that could be really kind of cool. Does she get to do it too? Like, does she get to watch some porn while you, like, go down on her? That would be really trippy. It would be trippy, but the thing is, then, then what ends up happening is, is then you end up getting like uh, that that disconnect. Right, and now you don't want to do anything unless one of you is wearing the helmet. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> and then it's like then it's weird. Oh my god, I have to like see you. So that's like a it's a dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, that's like one of those things. Like, do you think I could do heroin once and like <laughs> be all right with that? No, I saw something. Um, Trying to think where I saw it. Saw what? In in one of those Asian countries, because they're always ahead of us. They have better cell phones. <laughs> there was a uh, a guy <laughs> trying out like a virtual reality sex suit, mm -hmm. which I had a bit on this thing in like the uh, late '90s when I first heard that they were going to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, the fact that you haven't already called me out, going like, "Well, Bill, <laughs> how did you just stumble <laughs> upon this?" I'm I'm dead honest what I don't I was, remember. I was waiting for the rest of the story because I no. felt like there was more. It could have been while I was watching internet porn. Probably. Yeah, yeah. but they don't have advertising advertisements for that. It was yeah, like a they story do. on the side of the thing. They have all those. And ads. how do you know that? Mm, yeah, right, right back at you. Moving right along. <laughs> so yeah, but they don't have ad they don't have ads like that. Right, that's true. Well, this is what what it was. It looked like a fucking dude. He was like in like a mummy suit. <laughs> It was hilarious. It looked like he was all wrapped up in toilet paper. That's how I remember it, because it was so horrifying. It was just—it was one of those things. Whatever I was looking at, that then came up, and I went, "Ah!" Right? Mm -hmm. He was, and it looked like um, his hands were to his side. He had on the fucking, you know, I'm old and I can't see anymore. Mm -hmm. Those glasses. <laughs> those cataract glasses. Cataract glasses. From the drugstore. <laughs> yeah. So he had on those. He, I think he was all wrapped up because he didn't want anybody to see who he was. Yeah. Maybe okay. that's what it was. Okay. And then there was this thing. Obviously, his dick was in it. Oh, my God. And it just the same way your hand would be going like bang, 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 bang against yourself. Uh -huh. It was this thing. It was the most fucked up thing ever. Wait, would you ever use one of those flesh bot things? You know how porn stars, they get no, a mold of their vagina? those things are so fucking gross. I you think would those never things, try Those it? things are so fucking gross. I wonder, like, a what A long they... time ago, I did somebody's podcast. I'm not going to say who, but people uh -huh. who listen to podcasts know who is. Uh -huh, he had uh -huh. one of those things, and it looked like some Jeffrey Dahmer body part. Oh, I think I know automatically who you're talking Just about. Just yeah. sitting I, I don't think you do. Oh, okay. Because I know who you're going to guess, but it wasn't that person. Oh, okay. um, it looked no. It just looked like. And it, did he say that it didn't feel like a real? It can't feel like a real vagina, obviously. But like. It it, it it's just it's. <laughs> I I I, I can't weird. believe that it does like shit like that doesn't cause you to either be like become like a necrophiliac or some sort of per. <laughs> a like, necrophiliac? Why would it make you be a necrophiliac? Because you're fucking something. That well, looks looks like a body part, and it's not alive. Well, like, women have, like, dildos and vibrators and stuff, and it's, like, the same sensation. So why wouldn't uh, one of those flesh bot things feel like – isn't it kind of the Is same Is this principle? like another Madonna Iggy Pop thing? No, Am no, I no. looking at it the wrong way? 
Maybe no, I don't think no, I don't think you're looking at it. I remember way. Nia back in the day. I just think back you, in the day, you don't like the idea of a fake vagina. <laughs> you don't. You're not comfortable. Just with that. sitting on a table, <laughs> and it has a handle on it, and I'm holding it. No, I just think that's not your thing. You're not into that. That feels like Henry <laughs> portrait of a serial killer. I remember back in the day, right, when you actually had to go to a porno store to get your porn, mm -hmm. and they had like you know I was always behind the counter. Mm -hmm. And they would have shit up there. <laughs> One time, they had this. It was like, what's in the box? It was literally a head in a box, and the chick's mouth was like, Rrr, like you just <laughs> stick your dick in it. Yeah. And I'm like, somebody's gonna buy that. Yeah. And it was in like the same box like a basketball came in, and someone's gonna <laughs> take it and grab it by its fucking ears that are stuck to the side of its head. And they're just going to go home and fuck a head. Yeah. Just a head. That's now, there's weird. no fucking way mm -hmm. that that doesn't fuck you up psychologically. Okay. If you do that long enough, then you go out with a real person. It's already annoying that they have to buy it dinner and that there's a whole <laughs> body attached to it. And you have to talk to it. Yeah. <laughs> and then all they're thinking of just grabbing you by your ears. Water, 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 water. It's over. Yeah, it's fucked up. <laughs> Well, I still feel like, well, going back to the question, I feel like they can experiment with it, like, once or twice. But it can't be, like, a regular thing that they're doing all the time because then, yeah, that'll completely fuck up your sex life. Because then you'll just be looking at everything you do. Like, it's supposed to be this hyper-reality, dual-reality, virtual. It's just not good. You know, I was just thinking, well, let's just connection. fast forward here. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now... So that becomes the thing, right. which you know it's going to. Mm -hmm. People are going to do it. Mm -hmm. And then what it's going to become is porn stars will be making all of that fucking money. Mm -hmm. And it basically, you have a girl fucking, no, that'd probably just be like the whole suit. It's eventually just going to be the whole suit, right? What are you talking about? Like I'm, the whole... I'm, I'm, I'm talking about like in the future, like when like everybody has like a virtual reality sex suit this will right. actually help the population problem right <laughs> the virtual reality sex suit mm -hmm. okay and then porn stars will then have their likeness they'll do a pov porn mm -hmm. and then they get money and then you have to like subscribe oh, to them so like you can do you know, like you can do a virtual reality thing where you with actually any get porn to have star. sex to ha with like Asa Akira and then he, and then here's what happens yeah okay who's going to be the first celebrity that crosses over and eventually right mm -hmm. because they're sick of doing superhero movies mm -hmm. and they don't want to do the grunt work of an independent mm -hmm. because like you notice now they're all doing ads over here back in the day all the celebrities did ads, but they did them overseas, right? Mm -hmm. Remember, we used to go over and we go, oh, look at so-and-so doing a fucking watch thing or look at her doing this thing. Mm -hmm. But they'd never do them here because there was that whole um, um, stigma mm -hmm. that if you did a commercial, you're a sellout, blah, 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 whatever the fuck it was. Or it's like you're doing a commercial. You're a movie star. A movie star's not even on TV. Forget about doing an ad. Mm -hmm. Now that all went away, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm saying eventually somebody famous would do it. Right. You could, uh, yeah, get a suit and program it so that you're having sex with, like, Lindsay Lohan or someone. Right. And the well, first, and the first, and the first level will go down. No, it would be like, a, <laughs> like one of those reality TV show stars. Right. You know, when the reality show goes off the air, like Jersey Shore, they were all fucking huge. Now it's just disappeared. Where the fuck are they? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You could probably talk a couple of them into doing it. Right. Are we yeah. pitching a show right now? I think, or some kind of like high tech concept that will probably make a lot of money. That's going to end up happening. It sounds like a movie. It sounds like like a what was. Gattaca and then this about? is what's going to happen. You're going to have these self driving fucking or cars. Her. You're going to have self driving fucking cars, and people are going to be laying in them in virtual reality suits, having, <laughs> having sex, sex with any famous person they want to. <laughs> right. And they'll have, like, because you don't need a steering wheel or gas or brake or anything anymore, you literally have, like, your suit in there. And then when you're done, you roll over up from that seat into, like, another, like, a, a, like a freshen up, like, tub or some shit. We're to I think we're totally going in that direction. I think you're right. We'll, we'll, we'll see it in the next generation. Before, it was just, yeah, the flesh bot stuff where it's just the mold of the vagina or the dick or whatever, and then it's going to be this virtual. It'll be super expensive at first. It's going to go into a complete – it's going to be like when flat screen TVs first came yeah. out and they're 14 grand. So don't buy the first virtual yeah. reality sex suits. 
virtual sex. Wait till they're like they come down to like eight hundred bucks at Best Buy. <laughs> then you get them, right? Should we figure out how to like make this technology and just like patent it? <laughs> and that's how we'll make our make our. Yeah, Nia, we're we're gonna figure out how to do that. <laughs> I can't even read copy. But not. We're, we're calling it. That like that's what's we're gonna happen. It. I'm already yeah. selling right now with these self-driving cars, like the interiors of cars. What they're gonna have now? They're gonna have office ones. They're going to have sleeper ones. People just want to sleep going to work. Mm -hmm. They're going to have ones to, to catch up on your emails and all of that type of shit. Yeah. The different you can those that'll be like the different um, the the social one, the social and office one, all of that type of all I don't know. And then eventually it's going to be like, well, why are you even going to work now? Because everything's automated and then there's robots, right? Mm -hmm. And then one day the whole fucking thing just turns on us. What if there was a company? Like in some place really random, not really random, like a Japan. Or By the way, like neither that. one of us is high right now. No, not at all. Completely that high. This is the middle of the day. Never been more sober. What if there was a company somewhere in like, I don't know, not Japan, but like Eastern Europe that said, we want to <laughs> do this deal with you where we have these like sex dolls with your face on them <laughs> and they offered you like an, what, insane, me? Yeah, an insane amount of money. No. No. <laughs> to do it. No. And you could buy a Bill Burr sex doll. <laughs> do you realize the photoshops I'm going to get and I'm going to have to retweet oh now, God, you asshole? No. You're right. Shit. Oh, they're going to be horrifying, <laughs> but hilarious. Like a Bill Burr sex doll. Um, <laughs> Would you do it? Yeah, they come out of like somewhere random, like, you know, Norway or just something or like, you know. One of those place random like Norway. I love <laughs> no, Norway. That's not random enough. Like, you know, Turkmenistan or one of right. those fucking places. I'm not even saying it right, but just a random little pocket that was just like, you know, we have five million dollars and we want to make sex toys yeah, no. with your face no. on them. <laughs> no. You wouldn't go for it? Can you imagine that phone call out of nowhere? No. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I w no, I, I can honestly tell you that I wouldn't. Uh, no, I know you wouldn't. Well, yeah, I would think so. How the fuck did we get all the way over here? See, this is why I love the questions. Great questions. Because, look, oh, you're right, because look, of the person in their virtual blowjob. Look what or in their uh, buy, according to you. Hey, I never claimed to be smart since the beginning of these podcasts. I don't know. I, 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 I don't claim to be smart. And with that, go fuck yourselves. <laughs> um, sorry the podcast was so late. Um, I was flying back from Jacksonville, as I mentioned. Um, several times. Several times. I complained about it. And uh, I'll be checking in on you on Thursday. I'll see you. Go Blues! This motorcycle somebody had uh, loaned me. I, I told you guys. I fucking I decided to uh, to give it back. And uh, the guy just sold it. And it's fucking killing me. I know I made the smart move. You know, riding a motorcycle in L.A. is... Uh, it's like riding a motorcycle in Los Angeles. I mean, there's no other way to put it. It's just fucking, it's, a, it's, a, it's just too many goddamn people, you know? You know, like if I was a dictator, all right, and I just was just complete sociopath, just didn't give a shit about the Fifth Commandment, the amount of people that I would have eliminated in this city, just in general, so I could get around a little bit better, and I could ride a motorcycle every once in a while. Well, fuck, I'm a dictator, right? I should tell, you know. I should ride around when everybody else has curfew, when they're supposed to be home, you know? But then I couldn't ride around. I'd be worried I'd be the only guy out there, and everybody would know it's me, and then everyone would resent me, so then I'd get fucking whacked. See, this is why dictators have to kill so many fucking people. Because when you try to run the whole thing yourself, you just can't get past the level of resentment. So you have all this power, and you can't go anywhere. So you got to kill a bunch of people. That's basically it. It's common sense. What are you going to do? Has there ever been a dictator that just backtracked and was just like, all right, listen, man, like, I know I killed a lot of people. I, you know, I got a little carried away. I, uh, you know, I had a plan. And, um, you know, it's not working. It's not working. So um, I'd like you to forget about all those people that I killed. You know, a lot of them probably friends and family. Admitted, admittedly, I got a little crazy for the last 12 years. Uh, but I just kind of want to ride a motorcycle. And I don't want you guys to shoot me. So, let me finish. So, 
I've decided that ice cream is legal again and that, you know, people can go outside whenever they want until like 2 a.m. How about that? Is that better? Is that better? Are you guys starving so much that you can't uh, send an email at this point? Oh, that's right. I outlawed the Internet. I forgot about that. <laughs> is anybody even listening to this? Anybody? Um, yeah, that's too much stress, being a dictator. You know, I understand them, though. I understand them. You probably think that I'm fucking nuts. But you, know what, you know what I say? You know what I say to you, Mr., you know, I fucking drive to work and I drive home. Mrs., I go to the fucking gym and I got my own little fucking online fricassee business, whatever the fuck you do. All right? I want you to start traveling. Okay? And you go out there. You see what you see, and then you fucking report back to me. And I want you to then, with a straight face, tell me that you don't understand dictators a little more. Come on. You're going to see what I see. You're going to go out there, and you're going to see. First of all, you're going to, I don't know what the fuck you're going to see. You just, you know what it is? You're going to become, you're going to become grumpy like me. That's what it really is. It has nothing to do with seeing shit. You just. Sick of standing in lines. You know, you're sick of that cunt in front of you put, reclining in a seat on the fucking plane. You know, you're sick of fucking people who engage in conversation with the cashier. You know? Little fucking idle chit chat. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. It, it really has been raining, hasn't it? You know? Those fucking people. Okay, it's not. You, you keep it going. Keep the fucking line going. You cunt. Now that you're up there, you don't give it. Now, now you got all fucking day. Two seconds ago, you were in line with me exchanging looks like, you fucking believe this? Yeah, and then you get up there, and what do you do? You become part of the fucking problem. Right? And you know what I say in my little fucking inner Stalin? I say, eliminated from my world. You're gone. You're done. You're going right to a fucking labor camp. Okay, you want to chit-chat? Go break some fucking rocks and talk to people. Ah, oh, Jesus. Well, people figure it out. Dude, no, they, they got Oh, you see, that's what I ended up coming Dude, I used, I was used to be psycho into conspiracy theory like fucking six months to a year ago. And finally, I just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it anymore. I could, because there was no way out of it. It's just like. There's no way out of it. Th there isn't. I agree. You, I'm going to sit there. I'm, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to stockpile fucking gold coins. I'm, I'm going to start pulling water out of the atmosphere with this fucking $1,500 apparatus right. that, that somebody showed me on the internet. And at the end of the day, like, I was talking to Anthony on the Open Anthony show, that when you, when you stockpile all that shit, all you're really doing is doing the grunt work for the toughest guy on your block when the <laughs> right. apocalypse comes. Because when he comes <laughs> down the street, he's going to kick the shit out of me. Even if I have a fucking gun and I can yeah. summons up to, to commit my first fucking murder and blow that guy away, right, then what, what happens when, you know, when a little fucking the militia comes with the torches and the back Yeah, they're coming. The thing that's going to happen is a big dude's going to come to your door. You're going to shoot him in the head. Everyone's going to be like, holy fuck. And then you're going to shoot two other people because you've gone crazy for a second. So now yeah. you just want to take out, like, two chicks. And then, like, yeah. <laughs> and then you realize you're out of bullets. And then people are going to fucking tackle you. And start eating your nose and your ears. Yeah. And shit. No, that's <laughs> like what you, you fingering shoot. you. You should. <laughs> <laughs> You're just gonna become <laughs> a real life just <laughs> porta pussy. <laughs> No, you know what they do is they'll eat everything except for your, your fucking your, your genital waste area, and that'll just be like some sort of like handheld. <laughs> because you know, the second the apocalypse comes, everyone's gonna run into the porno store and grab everything that they always wanted to grab, but they were worried about getting in trouble. So all, all the all the rubber fuck me dolls will be gone. So them, chainsaw dildos. Yeah, they'll, just... they'll, they're gonna take it to the next level. That's what. They, <laughs> no, and if they hold a gun to your face right before you die and you have that shock look on your face, then then, then that's where they can skull fuck you because you're going to have like that, oh, like that, oh, they my God, don't shoot. They make you do that, oh, look, that, oh, no. And yeah, then, there and you then go. You're just... No, you know what I would do? I would shoot, one, I would shoot the fattest dude right. from my balcony. I have this little fucking bullshit balcony I can barely get a lawn chair on. And I would, I would fucking <laughs> sh I'll shoot the fattest dude coming down the block. And then my, my, my dirty, hairy line's going to be there. Eat that. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Why don't you gnaw on that? I'd make friends there, with them. Eat that. I'll make friends with them. What they do is 
is I'll just have some sort of like that'll be my role with that mob. Anytime you guys get pissed at me, just come out and just just act like you're friends with some fat guy. Right. And I'll I'll fucking shoot. Well, that doesn't make sense because they could kill him themselves. See, could... I would I would I, I don't have anything to offer you. No, I would have a, an apartment building that had one door, and you just see, like right before the apocalypse, you just get like the fattest tenants. You know what I mean? And then you just right. lock all their fucking doors, and so you have like. <laughs> <laughs> So no, you, you know, have, and then, then, oh. it's just a store. It's like a Costco of fat people, and then <laughs> people come and they're like, "All right, yeah, apartment four, go get Gary, eat, eat his ass." <laughs> <laughs> well, that's going to be currency. Fat people are going to become fat. Currency. People are going to be the new currency, man. Absolute fucking loot. We all know that. We all know that's that. That's why that Biggest Loser is such a stupid show in a, an apocalyptic sense. If you, if you know how to watch that show, you realize how foolish those people are by helping those people get out of their morbid obesity. Yeah, we're losing, we're losing food. We're losing food for the future. Yeah, and you, you, you're losing a big, fat bartering chip of, uh, to keep yourself alive. Yeah. Dude, that'd be great. And then you have the sawed-off shotgun and the little fucking that metal <laughs> door you open up. Whoosh, what are you looking for? I yeah. want Gary. Gary! I sent this last thing I'll read you guys. This guy sent me something about, uh, you know, I was talking about when you're going to go buy things and people ask for your phone number and all this fucking information and it fucking creeps me out. Every time they do that, I just think that they should play in the beginning of that Iron Maiden song, The Prisoner. You remember that from the 80s? Do you remember how that thing went? Information. Information. You remember this? The new number two. Who is number one? You are number six. Most psycho laugh ever. I am not a number. I am a free man. <laughs> Can you imagine if your fucking dad would laugh at you like that back in the day? Be like, son, how many beers did you have tonight? You're just like, I just had two. Right? And he just fucking, all of a sudden the lights start dimming, it's going to be over. So anyways, this fucking guy, did that make any sense, by the way? I don't know. I'm fucking sitting here with one microphone, no headphones in a fucking hotel room. This is what you get. All right. So this guy um, said, Bill, can you believe how much fucking information people are willing to give away for no, to strangers for no reason? He goes, I got my hair cut the other day, and the first thing they say to me before hello or what can I do for you is, the first thing out of the gate is, what's your phone number? So I say, why do you need my phone number? She says, so we know who you are when you come in, which is bullshit because they don't know you when you come in. They still have to ask what your goddamn number is. See, you got to love someone who actually fucking uses their brain. So anyway, she goes, he says, I don't want to give you my number. So then she scoffs in his face and says, um, we don't send the information out to anyone. It's just to keep track of you here. That's it. Um... And then she says, uh, then, okay, then the guy says, the guy wrote this really badly here. So then I guess he responds to, that doesn't make me feel any better. You don't need my phone number to cut my hair. Then this slag does this fine whatever that sounded exactly like your exaggerated impression of a dumb broad. Then she goes, how about your address? Dude, this is fucking, you know what? All these corporations are sharing this information to figure out exactly what you buy, when you buy it, what you like the best, so they can just fucking, I don't know what. You know? Jack the prices of this shit up. So anyways, um, she goes, how about your address? And the guy goes, what are you going to do? Drop the haircut off at my house? Just cut my fucking hair. <laughs> uh, now there's three people in line behind me in this worthless tub of cum. Jesus. Leans around me and says, and says, to, I guess, to the people behind him, sorry this takes longer when they, then he writes they, you know, don't give any information. And then he says sarcastically, oh, I see. I'm the one compl uh, complicating this transaction. And it's not even her fault. It's her, uh, oh, and it's not even her fault. It's her corporate creep bosses and all the fucking sheep that let people do whatever they want. Sorry this is so long. Well, you should apologize to my listeners because they had to listen to me read it. Yeah, man, don't give those people your fucking phone numbers. Don't give them your address. I do that. Can, can we get your phone number? Uh, no, you can't. We're not going to do anything with it. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. I know you're not going to do anything with it. I don't want you to have my phone number. 
What, are you going to call me up and see how my fucking haircut's going? Is it still short? Or do you think you need an adjustment? Did I tell you that story when I went into CVS? And that guy who looked with, with the Pee Wee Herman haircut? There was two, two foreigners in front of me. They barely spoke English. And they, he asked if they wanted one of those Savy Save cards. And they said no. And he goes, that's all right. I'll just scan one anyways. And he scans it. So I walk up, and I'm ready for this guy. He goes, do you have our little Savy Save card? And I say, no, I don't. And he goes, well, I'll just scan it anyways. And I go, no, I don't want you to. And then he scanned it. And I said, I said, excuse me, what did I just say to you? I just said I don't want that, and you scanned it anyways. Why did you just do that? And he goes, it's all right. I'll unscan it. I'll unscan it. And I go, what, what do you get, like half a cent for every person that you get, you know, that, that, that you get on the fucking list there? And he goes, no, I don't. And it's like, really? Is that why you can't make eye contact with me, you fucking piece of shit? He probably didn't even unscan the goddamn thing. You know, I don't understand people who help out corporations. I just don't. Have they done anything to demonstrate that they give a flying fuck about you or the drinking water in your town? Don't help those cunts. I mean, you can if you want to, but that's, I would just, I think it would be a better world if these fucking pricks didn't know every goddamn thing about you. You know, pretty soon you're going to walk in there and they're going to fucking ask if you can put a, uh, if they can just bug you like Gene Hackman in the conversation, right? All right, dude, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. You know what? I'm going to go down and I'm listen to this lady sing her songs so I don't have to think. There's a nice little crowd down there. There's got to be at least 26 people down there, which I think in downtown San Jose actually constitutes a mob. Maybe somebody will get tased and shot. That's the podcast for this week. Thank you guys so much for listening. I am currently revamping my website, and I hope that everything's going to be up to speed. I recently went over uh, 10,000 people on my mailing list, so I'm really excited about that. And uh, if you want to know what's going on, you know, especially if you see, you know, when I switched over to uh, Lipsyn with the podcast and all that fucking shit, if you were out of the loop, it's because you weren't on my mailing list. I'm not sure. You know, how funny is this? How funny is this? Uh, how fucking hypocritical am I? I just said don't give your phone number out to these cunts, and now here I am asking for your web address. I really did. Why do you people listen to this? I'm an idiot. All right, I'll talk to you next week.